Hi and welcome back to another video from Computex. We are now at the G-Skill booth. We will start with this very special system that Elmer Labs built. They had a very similar looking system already last year and this is a small update to it, a little bit better. And it is very interesting the way it works. So there's a copper pipe going up to the cooler and there is liquid nitrogen going through the pipe, evaporating in the cooler and that's where all the, the yeah, fog comes out from the top. What I was yeah, wondering about is what about condensation? Because typically with those systems, you can see it's constantly running at about minus 100 degrees Celsius. You would have condensation inside, but it's a locked system. So there's only a limited amount of water that would be in the air trapped in the system. And because the condensation starts on the pipe and then you can see all the frost, all the ice on the cooler and on the piping, most of the water would be trapped on there. So the components itself, like the motherboard, probably don't really get as wet. And in this state, at about minus 100 degrees Celsius, where it's uh, constantly running, the CPU can run at just above 7 gigahertz, and the memory clock is running stable at just above 10,000 megatransfers. And with this very interesting system, we will start our tour at the G-Skill booth. Are you looking for an affordable but powerful dedicated server? Then check out the new Hetzner AX42 which is just right for you. With the AMD Ryzen 7 Pro 8700GE octa-core CPU, 64GB DDR5 ECC memory and two 512GB Gen 4 NVMe SSDs, it gives you solid performance. And all this starting at just 46 euros per month. Thanks to the hourly billing, you also only pay as long as you actually rent the server. And if you need more performance, you can easily expand the memory and also the disk space. Hetzner operates several hundred thousands of servers in its own high-tech data centers and is known for its extraordinary price performance ratio, competent support and innovative in-house server solutions. Click on the link in the description below and check out Hetzner and the new AX42 server. As usual, G-Skill has a huge OC world record stage where they have uh, ongoing overclocking competition, also some kind of competition between the mainboard vendors and behind that we will see some new products such as memory modules and AIOs. Behind the Elmo Labs impressive Allen 2 system, there are more daily oriented uh, versions, so more normal memory frequencies, still rather high. 8000 on the right, and if we go more to the left, we can find this system with 10,600 megatransfers. What I personally find always interesting about these systems is that all of these with very high memory frequency will always utilize AMD APUs like this 8500G. So you will not or very unlikely find systems with this kind of memory frequency running like a 7800X 3D. So that's something to keep in mind. But it also shows what would be theoretically possible with high speed memory modules. So you can see even without exotic cooling methods such as LN2, it would be possible to run 10,600 megatransfers. You just need CPUs and mainboards to handle it. We already saw those CAM2 modules in the video at the ASUS booth and now at G-Skill, we also have them separate. I even asked, I'm allowed to touch it, it's not that much different from a normal DDR5 DIMM. At least the front side, you have the ICs, also the power supply. And the back side, where you can see a lot of copper surface, there are the contact pins. And in between this and a PCB on the motherboard, which would look very similar to this one, you would have a plastic sheet with pins to make the data connection between the CAM2 module and also the motherboard PCB and g -Skill asked me to get some feedback from you guys what you think about this type of memory module if that is something people want to see in the future rather than normal dim like this one which is the new trident z ck for upcoming intel arrow lake cpus the only thing i want to point out is that capacity wise the cam 2 module is similar to running two of these dims and if you would want to have more capacity like full population with four dims that would at least right now not be possible with the CAM2 modules. So that's the only downside apart from that. I think it is a pretty nice memory standard and especially cooling wise has a lot of opportunities. Very similar to what you saw with DDR4, G-Skill now also announced the Trident C5 Royal for DDR5. It's going to be available in a silver version and in a gold version. It's very shiny and I hope that you can see a little bit on camera, but I think very nice looking memory modules. Right next to it, we have gold and silver Trident C5 RGB modules. First in gold, also very, very shiny. And on the back side, we have the same models, modules in silver. 
Also next to it, we have the entry modules, which are going to be the Ripjaws M5 RGB, white, and also in a black version. So those are supposed to be memory modules that are a little bit cheaper than the other ones. G-Skill decided to even expand their portfolio even further, and here we see three different AIOs. I personally find this one the most interesting. It's also the most advanced of the AIOs they're showing. Comes with an LCD, again, if you're looking for something like that, also pretty cool, you can just remove it and see inside there's a fan, so for additional cooling of your VRMs, that would be a good way to enhance your cooling. And what I find kind of interesting is what kind of different daisy chaining solutions we can see on the exhibition. For example, you can just take off this fan and here you see underneath there are pins making contact with this metal plate. There's a cable on the bottom that is basically making the electrical connection for all of the fans. You can just click it on. So interesting way to daisy chain the fans. Not quite sure how convenient it really is because you still have to first add those metal frames that also contain the electrical wiring and then you can attach your fans to it. But interesting concept nonetheless. Now we're looking at the G351 case from G-Skill. Normally in front there would also be a glass panel which we just removed because it's much easier for filming. And inside we have daisy chained RGB fans, also from G-Skill, 30 millimeter fans, so should have good performance. What I spotted is when you just hold it for a second, there's a glass window in here. That is also something I haven't seen so far. And you can look into the bearing. So interesting design, interesting concept, also daisy chainable. And I also spotted another AIO in here with dual LCD screens. I have the feeling that the LCD screening thing is getting a little bit out of hand. But yeah, let me know what you think. I always think, okay, you might need another software and another software and another software, but probably there is a high demand for this and that's why everybody is uh, yeah, jumping onto the adding LCD screens everywhere. But the case design itself is also pretty nice has a wood panel in front and it's also real wood as you can see that's just an example piece but yeah real piece of wood CNC milled for the front panel another interesting concept uh, we just started the video on the Elmore lab system and right next to it we have MP customized concept cases that he made for the G-Skill booth so these are concept cases and again here G-Skill is asking for your feedback what do you think of this design because G-Skill is thinking about creating this as a limited edition exclusively for the European market and in that case it might also be made in Europe which I find very interesting. The concept of the case is it's made out of very solid aluminium as you can see this is five millimeter thick aluminium so very uh, big stability in the, in the base concept and structure and you can take out the motherboard tray. The motherboard tray and the backside is one piece. So you can pull out everything, rotate it by 180 degree, and this way invert the entire case if you want to. So much about the G-Skill booth. I'm just standing next to a 10,000 US dollar liquid nitrogen container that came also from Elmore Labs. The system we saw in the beginning is from him. And they made a prototype, a concept study to 3D copper print liquid nitrogen containers and the overall cost is about 10,000 US dollars. That shows how expensive this manufacturing method still is and thus how far it is maybe away from the reality to use this as a mass production uh, product. Still very interesting to see this, especially structure-wise, it's completely different from the normal CNC milled yeah, liquid nitrogen containers. I hope you had a nice insight from G-Skill booth. Thanks for tuning in in this video. See you next time. Bye-bye.